Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the McKinney. This is their part number Interim, I-N-T-E-R-I-M. Um, they have a, probably what's a quick code or an internal number, MK57470. I know it as an Interim, TA2714, that's 5 by 4 and a half and a 2060 finish. So what is an Interim hinge? Um, hope that you never need these, or hope that you're never the cause to need these, but this is what it is. Um, all kidding aside, an interim hinge is used when someone has ordered... Generally, it's a, it's a hinge used to correct a mistake. When someone has ordered something prepped for a 5-inch leaf on one side and a 4.5-inch leaf on the other side. Generally, what happens is... Something is sent wrong to the job. It's either it's and it's usually prepped four and a half inch, and it's supposed to be five inch. Uh, so what may happen is, you know, you send out all the frames, and it's discovered that they're all four and a half inch prep, um, but the doors arrived with the correct five inch tall um, preparation, or vice versa, um, or the frames go to the site five inch. Um, but the doors showed up at four and a half inch, and now it's going to take four or six weeks to get five inch prep doors. So sometimes people will order and approve um, a hinge like this that has different size leaves. Now, the reason that it works is because five inch on one leaf, four and a half inch on the other leaf. The reason it works is because when you're prepping doors and frames, your locations are to the center line when it comes to manufacturing. <clears throat> so while, you know, the top of the door to the center, the top of the door to the top of a hinge prep, let's say that it's Seco at six and five eighths, um, that's, that's for a four and a half inch hinge. If you change that to a five inch hinge or a four inch hinge, that six and five eighths is gonna, gonna change. But what always stays the same is its center line, and that's how they're able to work with a leaf like this that will be centered. So the five inch and the four and a half inch share the same center line, and that's how that can work. Now other manufacturers will make these unequal leaf hinges where they are uh, flush to the top, half inch down here, centered, and then flush to the bottom and a half inch up here. So you can order them that way, but McKinney offers it just this way, as far as I know. Uh, this is a TA2714 that tells us some things. It tells us it's a standard weight hinge, and this ought to measure, well, I guess it's going to measure, my caliper is telling me 146 thousandths on both leaves, pretty much. I would think that they're going with the thicker leaf, uh, the 5 inch version, whereas a 4.5 would be 134 thousandths. Also tells us that it's made of steel. This hinge has a satin chrome plating with a lacquer applied to it. TA2714 is also a five knuckle hinge. A couple of bearing packets when you're dealing with a standard weight hinge. It's full mortise as I said earlier, but you can see from the swag on the hinge leaves here how those leaves are meant to be uh, quite close to each other when they're brought parallel. It means that the door and frame are meant to be mortised uh, to uh, the hinge is meant to be mortised to the door and frame. This is going to a customer down here in southern Florida. They have a condo building, and they have some five inch on one side and four and a half inch on the other. There are some images down below, customer supplied fo photos, and it is exactly that. They have five inch preparations on the frames, but four and a half inch on the doors. So someone made that. It, an error. It would not be there for any other reason. I've never heard of someone ordering five inch on a frame and four and a half on a door and then saying, yeah, I want that unequal hinge. I've never heard of that. It's always been, hey, this stuff doesn't line up. What's going on here? Paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. Yep, it's supposed to be five inch. We sent four and a half inch to the job. Uh, so options it is where this hinge may come in. We don't sell them often, but often enough, to be very familiar with why they're bought and um, and even enough to keep a couple on the shelf. Let's switch to the screen view and take a closer look at the supporting documentation. 
Okay, so here is the item that we are looking at. Not much to see here, but by the time you're seeing this video, there will be some original images of the hinge itself. Okay, so there is a link below this video to the cut sheet, and let's take a look at that here and now. Full mortise interim hinges, re recommended for installations where door and frame are prepped for two different size hinges for new or retrofit installations. Again, I've never heard them for new installations. Um, really not sure what the logic would be for a new installation to do this. Um, you know, it could be it could be you've got some openings and someone has said I've got frames in place and I need to close these openings immediately and a contractor might say give me stock doors and give me those interim hinges while I wait for the five inch doors but in a new installation I just can't fathom why someone would want that um, as a new installation I'm if you have an idea please please let me know an equal amount is trimmed from the top and bottom of the leaf. <clears throat> Interim hinges are supplied with a no-hole bottom plug, and the pin is held in place by an NRP set screw, which allows the hinge to be reversible. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's true. There's no, you know, these... This, uh, that tip is held in. I've not loosened the NRP at all. I would imagine that loosening it will permit this portion to come out um, but I don't really know what that inner construction looks like inside of there. We'll leave that up as a mystery for right now. Nonetheless, it's a non-removable pin. It might be just simply a pin that is assembled in such a way that it cannot be driven out whatsoever. Um, however, I wouldn't see the purpose for having a non-removable pin here um, at all. But I imagine that the way that this actually works is that you have a pin, and then this is just a press fit button cap would be my guess. Um, and we'll take a look at that after we um, come back to the uh, screen view. And available in both the TA2714 in both a steel and a stainless base and the heavyweight version in both a steel and a stainless base. So standard weight steel, standard weight stainless, heavyweight steel, heavyweight stainless. You can see how the part numbers change there. And unfortunately we don't have a template of this item and I'll contact the factory and update this if they ultimately can produce a template. Now as we move further into this cut sheet, I don't see how they differentiate between what is the door leaf and what is the frame leaf. Um, you know, I would normally think that the NRP is, um, you know, possibly towards the top of the hinge, but they're generally in the middle of the hinge. And I, as a result, I don't really see much of a difference in terms of where that's located, except um, I suppose I would want the NRP towards the top, but then these are going to become certainly handed hinges. So the fact that they indicate that they're reversible, um, you know, I think they might be giving this data here in these two tables just for the sake of presenting the data. Okay, so that's what this hinge is, and that's kind of what I think it's used for, at least my experience tells me. Now this link here below the manufacturer's page, that's going to allow you to review not only all of the McKinney products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog that's here. Other encyclopedic documents are here, uh, such as prior versions of the catalog and a McKinney catalog from 1929. If you're interested to know what they were doing almost 100 years ago, there it is. Product templates as well right here. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, what we were talking about with that NRP, um, I'm going to say that most of the pin is down in here, and that's probably just a press fit cap. 
meaning that there's no access hole to give someone the impression that it can be manipulated. Um, that size Allen wrench is 332nd of an inch for this NRP. Uh, I believe that's pretty much a standard size. So I can loosen that NRP set screw. You don't have to remove them, but substantially loosening them is the way to go. You don't want to lose it either. Um, that should allow me to kind of grab that top of that pin and pull it out, but because that pin probably goes all the way down, or probably down into here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at the opposite side. <clears throat> I'll use a cloth to put it on the edge of that button tip, as I put a uh, channel lock over it, and just see if I can coax it loose. Uh -uh. Oh yeah, it, it, it in fact does move. Yeah, did get it to move. So I'm going to just coax it off a little bit, and I'll stick a flat-bladed instrument underneath it. Underneath the head. Almost. Should be adequate to get that pulled off. Indeed, that's exactly what it is. Then you'd be able to drive that pin out should you need to once you've loosened that NRP screw. So not a big deal on that whatsoever. Okay, that's set down. We'll tighten that set screw again on our NRP. So I could have driven that pin out and you very likely will want to. You're not going to want to probably hang doors <clears throat> with leaves attached. It is easier uh, to kind of separate the leaves, attach each of them to the door and frame, and then bring all of that together and tap the, uh, the pin down. Okay. So there you go. Mystery solved in terms of what that is. Uh, McKinney, the name is synonymous with hinges and has been for a long time. They're under the umbrella of Asa Abloy, a company who has... A, a multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation uh, that has uh, constituent uh, companies that completely fill the commercial building space, at least in North America. Their uh, presence in Europe and elsewhere in the world I can't speak to uh, with any absolute command, although I'm familiar with Abloy, you know, ASA, other companies that are non-North America, or at least United States based. McKinney's sister companies here in the United States, of course, would be Medico, Sargent, Yale, Norton, Corbin, Ruswin, Pemco, Hess, Folger, Adam, Adams, Wright, uh, Rockwood, if I haven't said them, et cetera, et cetera. Hope you don't need this hinge for the wrong reason, because it can make a um, uncomfortable scenario. No one wants to order five inch prep on a door and frame and then have to except four and a half inch. The reason is because a five inch hinge is just simply more, far more substantially capable of handling the load of what is <clears throat> being carried, the door that is. Um, I have read a statistic somewhere that it was about 20% more capable just by going with a hinge that's a half inch taller. And in my uh, understanding, based on what I have uh, been taught and learned, that five inch tall hinges would be standard practice when you get past three foot, especially three foot six. Um, and if you get into those doors that are heavier than your 18 gauge typical, you ought to be using not only five inch, but heavyweight as well, the 190 thousandths. That cut sheet did tell us that it was 146 thousandths on these hinge leaves. So that's 
what it is. I have requested a template as well from the factory, so if that materializes, I will update it in the product uh, extended description, in the product's description. Any questions on the interim tw uh, TA2714 hinge or any other McKinney product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. So I wasn't quite finished. I did wrap up that video and didn't explain what the screws were that were included. You're going to get all wood screw. Well, this order came with all wood screws and all machine screws. 1224 flat undercut head machine screws and then 12 by inch and a quarter threaded to the head Phillips drive wood screws. So whether it's wood doors, wood frames, steel doors and steel frames, you're covered, but don't assume that the correct screws will be sent for your application. I don't know that it's standard that they send all machine screws and all wood screws. I would indicate to the factory at the time of order what screws that you require. Maybe not so much with a hinge that's somewhat common like this. They're probably thinking steel doors and steel frames. But if you were to order six by six, you know, what's the logic there? Would you need any machine screws? Probably not. Um, probably all wood screws. But if it was five by four and a half, like a standard five inch tall hinge that was four and a half when laid fully open, um, you know, that could be wood, wood doors, wood frames. That's very likely going to be steel doors and steel frames. The point of the matter is specify that. Think of a four by four. That could be anything. That could be steel frames and wood doors. So be mindful to um, specify, indicate in the comment field at the time of order what makeup of screws that you would like. All wood screws, all machine screws, half wood, half machine. Just simply specify so that we can translate that information to the factory so that they can assemble the order per your requirements. Uh, yeah, these machine screws are also thread forming. A little cut out there in a hollow metal frame when they're spraying the frame with prime coat. Paint gets everywhere, including in the threads. Well, that little thread forming tip is going to allow you to clean those threads out as you're running the screw in. Finally, any questions on the interim TA2714 5 by 45 or any other McKinney product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. If you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please click subscribe as well and even share the video with someone that you know. And if you have any questions for a future video, please send them our way and we will make every attempt to oblige. And thank you very much.